This is about the large-scale indiscriminate use of weapons that the civilized world long ago decided must never be used at all. The supposed use of sarin gas in Syria is now being used as a pretext for war. But when did the civilized world decide that sarin gas shouldn't be used? And how different is sarin gas from the weapons of mass destruction that the civilized world wants to use on innocent Syrian civilians? Developed by the Nazi's own IG Farben, creators of Zyklon B used for mass murder in concentration camps, sarin gas was a standard chemical military weapon of both the U.S. and the USSR. And in the 1950s, it was adopted by NATO as a standard chemical weapon. The U.S. military industrial complex made a science out of sarin delivery. Pictured here is the M134 bomblet designed for the M190 Honest John rocket warhead. The bomblets carried sarin nerve agent and were released 5,000 feet above their target, saturating an area 1,000 meters in diameter with sarin gas. Does Syria possess anything like that? But of course, it was okay because we had it. It defies any code of morality. Let me be clear. The indiscriminate slaughter of civilians, the killing of women and children and innocent bystanders by chemical weapons is a moral obscenity. After using and weaponizing sarin gas for over 40 years, the U.S. signed a treaty in 1993 to ban its use. Five years later, CNN and Time magazine both broke a story about the U.S.'s use of sarin gas during Vietnam. In the firestorm of controversy, CNN and Time fired the reporters and declared the story false. However, the reporters pushed back with a 77-page document backing up their allegations, and April Oliver won a $1 million lawsuit against CNN. But just the presence of sarin gas in Syria, regardless of whether it was used by the rebels, by the CIA and Jordanian commandos that La Figaro reported entered Syria a couple of weeks earlier, or whether it was actually the Syrian government, the use of chemical weapons is supposed to be justification for the U.S. military industrial complex to rain death down on tens or hundreds of times more innocent men, women, and children than were killed in this attack. But chemical weapons experts not affiliated with the U.S. government have cast doubt on whether sarin was actually the chemical used. 500 times more toxic than cyanide, it can kill within one minute. And it will kill first responders who don't wear protective clothing. That this apparently didn't happen makes it doubtful that the chemical used was sarin. And how does sarin gas compare to weapons that the U.S. has used and continues to use? Millions of gallons of Agent Orange were dropped in Vietnam during the war. Nearly 50 years later, three generations later, it is still showing up in horrible birth defects. And it didn't just affect Vietnamese civilians. American soldiers are dying from cancer and having difficulty getting the U.S. government to accept responsibility, having to fight one by one against the VA. And the U.S. continues to use weapons that would mean a slow death sentence for those who survived the war, both U.S. soldiers and foreign citizens. That would be depleted uranium. At about the same time the U.S. agreed to ban the use of sarin gas, it reversed its policy and began exposing U.S. soldiers to depleted uranium. Like Agent Orange, it is also a persistent poison, killing slowly and causing birth defects. Our sense of basic humanity is offended not only by this cowardly crime, but also by the cynical attempt to cover it up. The American government's hypocrisy over the use of weapons of mass destruction is a stench before heaven. That they would use this to justify the murder of tens of thousands more people is what should offend our sense of humanity. For InfoWars Nightly News, I'm David Knight. Inform yourself and reach out to others with a print version of InfoWars magazine. Available as an annual subscription or in discounted multipacks at InfoWarsStore.com. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.